Hello and welcome to the third episode of my Raspberry Pi robot series. As you can see, by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to make your robot follow a line all on its own using its set of infrared line sensors. In the previous videos, we covered basic wireless motion control as well as obstacle avoidance. This tutorial will build upon those, and if you haven't watched them, you can find a link to the whole playlist below. As usual, we have two objectives today. Number one is to understand a line following Python program. And number two is to actually get our robot to follow a line. Here is what you'll need in this tutorial. The list of equipment that you will require is exactly the same as in episodes one and two, however I'll just run through it briefly. As always, we'll be using the Pytogo light from Fortronics as our robot, so you'll of course need one of those. If you do not have one, then check out Fortronics' website in the description. Ensure that your Pytogo light is constructed and ready to go. Now it is all very well having a robot kit, but you will of course need a Raspberry Pi to control it. Remember that all models of the Raspberry Pi are compatible, and I'll be using the model B+, just for the sake of continuity with the rest of the series. As usual, the operating system we will be using is Raspbian. After that, you'll need six AA batteries to power your robot. I recommend these rechargeable Panasonic AnyLoops. You can find a link to Amazon below. Just like in the previous episode, you'll also need a Wi-Fi dongle to connect remotely to your robot. How to set this all up was covered in episode one. As you'll be remotely accessing your Pi to go, Make sure you have a computer on standby in order to SSH into it. I'll be using a Windows 7 desktop. Lastly, note that in this tutorial, you'll need some kind of black line for your robot to follow. This line should ideally be on a white background, and so the easiest way to get a suitable line is to print one from the internet. I'll cover how to do this now, and so if you're going to follow how I do it, see to it that you have a printer, scissors, and some way of sticking sheets of paper together, such as sellotape. Alternatively, you can fashion your own line using something like electrical tape and then skip ahead to the software installation part of this video. Now let's get started. As I just said, the first thing we're going to do is prepare our line and to do this, you'll need to boot up a PC and open up a web browser. Now you'll need to navigate to the GitHub directory that I use to store all of the robot software. You can do this by typing in github.com forward slash the hyphen raspberry hyphen pi hyphen guy forward slash robot. When there, click Pi to go, then Extra Tools, and finally then, Line Following. You should be presented with a web page that looks like this, with two PDF files. If you take a look at trackgenerator.pdf, you'll see that it is just a document that I've pulled off of the internet, and it contains lots of different kinds of tiles with varying lines on them. This will allow you to create your own course, and you can download the whole document by clicking Raw here. For this tutorial, however, let's just keep things simple. Go back and you'll see there's also a file called sampletrack.pdf. If you click on that, you'll see a basic circuit made out of eight pages. Four of these are straight lines and four of these are corners, which when joined together will make a simple route for your robot to follow. Again, click raw and it will download. Then open it up and print it off. Once that is done, cut out each tile and stick them together in order to make a loop using sellotape. You should be left with a complete track like so. Now I'd recommend using something to stick it to the floor, just so it doesn't move around when the robot is on it later. Four pieces of blue tack at the corners works well. Now with the track sorted out, let's move on and get the software up and running. So go over to your Pi to go and make sure everything is set up correctly. See to it that the Raspberry Pi is connected with all of the GPIO pins in place, ensure that your batteries and SD card are in place, and then don't forget that your Wi-Fi dongle needs to be plugged into one of the USB ports as well. Once this is all done, flick the switch to power up your robot and you should see your Pi2Go light come to life and connect to the internet wirelessly. As illustrated in episode one, jump onto your other computer and remotely access it via SSH. With everything set up, we can now get on to actually making our robot follow lines. Now that everything is turned on, currently you should be able to type commands into your Raspberry Pi. First, sign in and then find the folder where all of the robot software we installed previously is located. For me, if I list the contents of my home directory right now with the command ls, you'll see that familiar robot folder. Change directory into that with the command cd robot. Once there, we'll have to change again into the pi to go directory found inside the robot one. Do this with the command cd pi to go. If I list the contents of this directory, you'll see all of the programs that we've used in episodes one and two. Now, just like last time, before we can go any further and get our robot going, we must first update this directory in order to grab the program that we will be using off of the internet. To do this, type the following command, git pull, and then hit enter. You'll see a couple of lines of text as your Pi pulls the latest editions from GitHub, 
the service that I use to distribute code. Once that is finished, if you type ls, you'll notice that a new file has appeared, named linefollower.py. This is the code that we will be using today. Before we run it, let's take a look at the actual Python behind it. I'm going to do this by opening the file in the text editor nano using the command nano linefollower.py. So as you can see, as usual, I've commented the code in order to help you if you decide you'd like to edit it, something I recommend you do. Scrolling down, you'll see the first two lines of code. These simply import the libraries that we will need and initialize the pi to go library for use. I then define a variable called speed and set it to 60. This means that the motors of my robot will move at 60% of their full speed. You can change this to any value between 0 and 100. An idea might be to experiment with it later and see the effect on how well your robot follows its line. If I scroll down a little bit further, you can see the main body of code. This has all of the Python that will actually make our robot follow a line. Before we can take a look at it, let's go back to the PyTago and try to understand how our robot is actually going to do this line following. What components will it use? Well, if you look at the bottom of your robot, near the cast ball, you'll see two black sensors. These are IR line sensors, and they use infrared light to detect whether or not a line is beneath them. This translates into binary logic. If one of them detects a line, then it'll be triggered as on. This is equivalent to one. When there is no line, the sensor is not triggered and is equal to zero. By using both of these, the robot can navigate and see where the line is, and this is how your pi to go will follow a black line. Let's go back to the program to see just how we code this. So if I go back to the main body of code, you'll see that it is in a while loop that simply says, do this forever. After that, I define the two sensors. I say that the left line sensor is called left, and the right line sensor is called right. The three following parts are simple if statements. The first one says, if the left sensor is the same as the right sensor, for example, if they're both triggered or both not triggered, then I simply want my robot to go forwards at the speed we defined earlier. The next two chunks deal with turning and they are very similar to each other. The first one says, if the left sensor is triggered, if it is true, turn the opposite direction right. The second if statement does the same, but vice versa. It says, if the right sensor is triggered, turn the opposite direction left. And so by having this in a continual loop, the pi to go will be able to follow a line. The last bit of the program here just cleans up the code when you want to end it. And that's it. As I've said, feel free to tweak and change the code. It's the best way to learn about these kind of things. Now let's run the program and make our robot follow a line. So place your robot on your line and then simply type sudo python linefollower.py. Immediately, you should see your pi to go light spring to life and make its way along the track. Your robot should be able to get around this route with ease. As an extension, why don't you try making a more complex track? And also take a look at the code and see how changing things like the speed affect your line followers performance. In order to stop your Pi to go moving, simply hit Ctrl and C on your keyboard and that will kill the program. And so concludes the third episode of my Raspberry Pi robot series. Be sure to subscribe, like and share for more Raspberry Pi tutorials, videos and information. Until next time, bye.